Greetings, YouTube. If there was a photographic accessory that allows us to take razor sharp images every single time, would you use it? Stick around and let's go talk about it. I don't think I can carry this heavy tripod around all day. I just want to stay home and bake some cookies with my mom. <clears throat> Wrong answer. Failure. I don't know about you, but I would personally argue that a well-made tripod is the most important photographic accessory that you can have in your kit, often edging out the importance of upgrading your cameras and lenses. And I say that because of what a tripod can actually do in massively changing your photography. I mean, surely the only reason why you're not getting sharp photos is because you haven't purchased a $2,500 lens yet, right? All right, so let's talk about the obvious, and more importantly, the less obvious reasons for why tripods are an absolutely essential photographical tool, and really stick around because those less obvious factors are the ones that really transform your photography. What amazes me these days is people's obsession with equipment. I mean... New modern cameras like the Nikon Z9, for example, can do things that we've never been able to do with cameras before, but no other tool than a tripod can guarantee every single time that you can get consistently sharp results irregardless of shutter speed, ISO, or the focal length of your lens, and even other mitigating factors like wind and environmental factors. A tripod is the only way you can guarantee that you're gonna be able to stabilize your imaging at a sharp result regardless of how much money you spend on your equipment. And likewise, a tripod is the only way that you can guarantee that you can produce the same composition every single time consistently, especially a composition you put so much effort into artistically creating. With a quality, well-made tripod, you can put whatever heavy equipment you want on top of the tripod and guarantee that you can meet your artistic vision every single time with image stabilization. Why limit the potential of the equipment you can use? Why limit the potential of your longer focal length lenses? All right, so let's talk about the less commonly thought about reasons for why tripods are an absolutely essential tool in your photographical kit. And quite honestly, I think that these factors are the most likely ones to actually change your photography. All right, so firstly, tripods force you to slow down in taking your time to artistically create your vision and your composition. So. When you utilize a tripod, it forces you to think more like a photographer who had an old format camera, like a, a large format camera, where you had maybe a couple photographic plates and a couple opportunities to actually take your photograph and get your ideal composition. And that forces you to be very meticulous, which leads to very thoughtful decisions and very thoughtful, intriguing photographs as a result. All right, so here's the thing. I would argue that this meticulousness leads to better photographic ability than any lens or camera upgrade that you can think of. Think about any photographer that has inspired you to actually become a photographer in the first place. They're probably not successful because they have the most modern equipment, the most modern cameras and lenses, but because they go outside and painstakingly create these beautiful compositions with effort and time and artistic vision, and their success is purely a result of that. A well-made tripod purely just facilitates that. I mean, do you think after you've purchased that new lens or camera, you've actually become a better photographer or as, as a result of that purchase? Well, only you would know. All right, so after all this talk about the importance of tripods and how they can absolutely change your photography, what actually makes for a good tripod in the first place? The first and most important thing is like, is it a tripod you're actually gonna use? Like I could go on about how like the heaviest and sturdiest, most expensive tripod is like the best thing and it will change your photography. But if you're not going to use it because maybe it's too heavy or it's too expensive or whatever it is, like, what's the point? I'd rather find someone find a more affordable tripod that's maybe smaller and lighter weight, but still good and use it and really have it improve their photographs rather than like not using a tripod at all. The sturdiest tripods have the fewest amount of leg sections. And this one here has two leg sections, but many tripods have three or even four leg sections. The reason why this is important is because the weakest layer of a tripod is always going to be that last leg section. And if you have more leg sections, that last layer is gonna even be smaller, further reducing the stability of your tripod. And quite frankly also, it's just easier to take up and take down a tripod that has less leg sections. 
Another really important factor that determines the stability of your tripod is, do you have to raise the center post much for it to reach eye level? When you have to raise your center post significantly, it significantly reduces the stability of your tripod because essentially you're turning your tripod into a, a monopod where it can like wobble back and forth a lot more, especially when you put heavy gear on top of it. So a tripod that has legs long enough for it to reach eye level without having to raise the, the center post significantly is, is a sign of a very stable tripod. All right, so the last important thing to consider is the type of head that you have. This tripod has a ball head on it. And ball heads, I think, are really advantageous for photographers because it makes it very easy to switch the, the camera into a vertical position for a vertical composition. But the other type of head that's really popular is a pan tilt head. And pan, pan tilt heads can be good too, especially for like videographers, because you can isolate the movement of one axis at a time, and that can be very good for certain contexts. So depending on what context you desire, you may prefer one or the other, but certainly good tripods can be made on either side. So these days, you don't have to spend a gargantuan amount of money to get a quality tripod. This tripod here cost me $150, and that's with the uh, Slick 635AS head and Slick Pro 700DX legs. And uh, this tripod has been my workhorse tripod for the last year, and it's been incredible, honestly. Like, with my 200 to 500 lens, like when I zoom in, uh, and tap the lens and move it around and everything like the image just doesn't jiggle like it stays very stable Which is exactly what you want in a quality tripod. So I highly recommend this brand I think it's a really great price point But there's so many other good tripods out there too by other brands and I'll link some recommendations in the description below and those are just thoughts So if you've agreed with what I've said about the importance of tripods and incorporating them into your workflow Let me know about your experiences in the comment section below. Or frankly, if you've disagreed with anything I've said, also let me know in the comment section below. Tell me your thoughts, I wanna hear from you. I'd be totally ashamed of myself if I didn't give credit where credit is due. Uh, the work of John Shaw has been an incredible inspiration for this video, as well as my photography as a whole. He's an incredible landscape photographer. Check out his website, check out his books. I put some links in the description below. So I hope you found this video interesting and intriguing. If you did, leave a like, it really helps out my channel. Also, if you'd like to check out more of my content, subscribe to my channel. And lastly, if you'd like to check out some of my photography, see the website in the description below. Hope to see you in another video.